Hello, this is Essie the Rich Woman. I just got to say something um, as fast as I can, but um, you know how people people that don't believe in God um, and they will talk about well, God don't do this for me and God don't do that for me. And so, and then I say, well, what you do for him? I say, are you obedient to him? Do you do this? Well, then they look at me and say, well, you love him. You you doing this. You worshiping him. You what, Look at you. You've been in your car for how many years? 13 years or whatever. And so, to those people, the, to the people that think that God should give them this and God should give them that and God should just give, give, give and not require anything back. First of all, Yahweh is a parent. He is a parent substance. He is the parent substance. So you have a mother and father. Where did you think it came from? Our Heavenly Father is a parent substance. And so just like your parents may require certain things from you before they give you something. So say like your parents say to you, um, if you get good grades, if you graduate um, from high school and you are on the honor roll and all this stuff, we're going to buy you a new car. So your, your parents require certain things from you. And then they give you, they reward you. Where do you think they get it from? The Heavenly Father requires certain things from us. He and what and the things that he required, like see, you might not even know that because you don't read the Bible. Some people don't read the Bible. They don't even they don't even bother to read the Bible, but they can tell God, God don't do this for me and God don't do that for me. Well, maybe if you were a good child to him, maybe if you prayed to him, maybe if you put him first, you worshiped him and you loved him, then he would do for you. He don't have to do anything for someone like that don't even acknowledge for someone that talks bad about him, that puts him down. What do we have? He don't have to do anything for you. The, look at the fact that you still got your breath. It's, it's good enough. I'm telling you, it really is. Because once he take his breath from you, you know where you're going. And you know where you're going to spend eternity. And if you think that a lot of people is going to be with you in hell, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people in hell. But y'all ain't going to be partying. Y'all ain't going to be looking over to the next one, being friends and going to hang out somewhere. You're going to be suffering so much. Your pain is going to be... The, boy, the worst pain that you can ever feel on earth would not come close to the pain and suffering that you're going to feel in hell. It, The pain on earth is just a type and a shadow of what you're going to feel in hell. Just a type and a shadow. It don't even come close. So you're going to be in such agony that you're not going to be, you're not going to know who, who is next to you. You ain't going to know. Y'all could be in the lake of fire all bunched up together. Believe me, you ain't going to look over and say, how you doing? Which Y'all ain't going to be talking. Y'all ain't going to be talking because you're going you gonna to be in so much pain that you're going to be gritting your teeth. You, you mashing your teeth together. That's how much pain you're going to be in. You think you're going, you think hell is a walk in the park? Believe me, the reason why Satan is so mad, the reason why Satan wants to take so many people with him because he can't get back in heaven no more. He can't go to heaven. So he's mad at Yahweh. So he's going to take as many people as he can with him to hell because he knows that we are made in the image of our Heavenly Father. And he knows our Heavenly Father loves us. So he's going to hurt the Heavenly Father by taking all his people all the people that are made in his image with him well not all of us because I'm not going but you know what I'm saying he's going to take as many people as he want with him into the lake of fire so believe me people people will choke so much about yeah I'm going to hell 
<laughs> they really think they're gonna be partying in hell they really think i don't care it the whole almost the whole world is going to go to hell but believe me you're not going to even know who the next person is right next to you you're not because you're going to be so much in 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 so much pain I, it I, it's just unbearable pain that you're going to be in can you think of any pain on earth that make you grit your teeth make you mash your teeth can you think of any pain on earth that make you mash your teeth you're gonna be in so much pain you it's like you're gonna be alone even though you have all these people with you you're gonna be alone y'all ain't gonna be going hanging out nowhere y'all ain't gonna be living it up in hell you better read the bible you better read the bible this little time we got on earth right now is just it's going to determine where you go for eternity and a lot of people are so like looking at well you've been in your car for 13 years you worship him what, what do you got it's his timing not my timing not your timing it's his timing he will bless me when he wants to bless me okay not when you say so all I, and if he don't if he take my life today i'm fine with it because i know where i'm going uh, I'm going to have eternity in heaven. Okay? This life is nothing compared. This is this not even... They, they People will tell you, some people that really know about spiritual things will tell you that this earthly life, yeah, it ain't even real. That the spiritual life, that's the real life. That's the real thing right there. And that's where you want to go to heaven, not hell. This little life, I'm telling you, it go by so fast. You have a baby before you look around. That baby is a teenager. Before you look around, they're getting married, having kids, going on. That life go by so fast, the physical life, so fast. And so eternity is forever, for eternity. Like, time, he... Our Heavenly Father created time, okay? He created time. And He put man in time. He created it. You need to think outside of time. Eternity. Because time is created. So, I just, I just, it, it, it frustrates me to hear people with their little brain and how they put down God because he's not giving them giving 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 them um what do you do for God what do you do for Yahweh that he should give you have you picked up a bible and read it have you learned anything about him do you know him do you know what he require of you but you can ask him for this and this and that you expect him to give you this and that? What have you given him? And do you want to look at my life and say, well, you do this and you do that, but look what he's done. He haven't done anything for you. I have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the gift of all gifts. The Holy Spirit leads me, guides me, protects me, enlightens me give me dreams and visions directs me yeah i can be I'm, I'm a woman and i do uber and i'm not scared to do uber i just got off at 1 a.m i just got off at 1 a.m i hear women oh i'm scared you, you well i mean yeah i i can see why you scared when you bash god when you talk about him in such a horrible way um, who do you have to, who, I mean, it, it, do you, you, you don't have him to protect you really when you talk about him in such a horrible way. Who do you have to, to protect? So how can you do Uber to one in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning when you have really put down the heavenly father? He's not your friend because you think bad about him, but he, but he's my heavenly father. I love him with all my heart. 
I don't think bad about him. I think highly of him. So I can do Uber to 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I know he's going to protect me. But you scared. You scared to do Uber. You scared to go here. You scared to go there. Yeah, because you talk down to the Heavenly Father. So you don't have his protection. Yeah, that's why you're going to be scared. Mm -hmm. I've been in my car for 13 years. I think. I mean, 2011. This 2024. Yeah, 13 years. I've been in my car. People have came up to try to do something to me, but they, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. I want to share something with you guys. I don't even think I was finished talking about what I was talking about, but I want to share something because it came up into my head. Um, and I shared this like earlier on into my channel, my YouTube channel, but... Um, it was about maybe three years ago, I think. Two or three years ago. I kept seeing the word be still. I'm like, okay. I know what my Heavenly Father is talking to me. And I knew he was talking to me. And I'm like, be still. You know, like, I don't, what, what does that mean? Be still about what? And then I hear it and I see the word again, be still. And I can see the word, I can see the word when like when I'm going through social media, I see be still. It could be on a t-shirt, it could be on a bumper sticker. I can see the word anywhere. Be still. And like I, I just kept seeing this word. I just just constantly seeing this word and be still. And I'm like, but I, I don't know, Yahweh. What you mean be still? Be still about what? You know. And I'm asking him, like, what does that mean? What you want me to be still about? So, this was um, around Christmas time. And somebody invited me to their house for a Christmas. Um, they had, like, vendors at their house. And so, they invited people over to buy things, you know. So, I went. I went. They invited me over as a vendor. And I went to their house. And I set up... Um, I think yeah she had tables set up so I um, put my table cover down and I put my crochet on the table I put my you know my mannequin heads and all that stuff I set my crochet out on the table and the event was supposed to be the next day so I'm, I'm homeless just all the time I'm homeless so um, and, and the lady of the house she knows I'm homeless so um, the next day I get there my stuff is already set up on the table so the next morning I get there and there are some people already there that have beat me there and so um there was this one particular lady seemed very nice she was younger than me but she seemed like a very nice lady but I knew it was something she kind of had this um golf 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 fit like uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right but you know how those people that wear black um like our dark colors she kind of had this that way about her but uh, she said that she's singing a group like a um, a singing group or a band or something like that so she kind of had that way about her but she seemed like she was a nice lady right very nice seemed to be very nice lady um and so I was, um, I know that I was talked about to this woman. The lady of the house talked to this woman about me in my living situation because this woman has a, a home. Um, she was written a home out in like the country area, like off by itself. And, um, she, um, was using the house like a mission where you get people to come and stay at your house and you get paid I guess through the government or something so that's what she was using the house for I don't know if she called it mission or if she called it something else so um she I know took an interest to me and she was talking to me a lot even sat up a chair next to me and everything and 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention to this. I'm noticing it. I'm not dumb and stupid. So, um, we, we talked and everything. And, you know, I liked her. She seemed like she was cool. And so, um, she ordered something from me. Her and another lady. And I said, okay, I'll make it. And then we'll meet up later at Starbucks so I can give you what you ordered. And so, um, we had met up at Starbucks. And, oh, I skipped a very important part. Okay, so, while we was at the lady's house during the event, the lady wants, um, asked us did we want um, tea or hot chocolate or anything like that. So the lady that took an interest to me that I talked to that I thought was a nice lady, um, she wanted, I think she wanted hot chocolate. She got a mug out of the cabinet and she signed it on the counter and facing me said, be still. And so I was crocheting. I looked up and I saw this mug and the words facing right at me said, be still so i thought to myself there's those words again i look back down i start back crocheting so fast forward that that very lady that had the mug is the one that i met later on to give her something that i had made for her and she paid me for it but we went into starbucks and we talked we sat down and we talked she told me that you know she wouldn't she um if i wanted to i can come and live with her in her house and i don't have to pay anything um it'll basically be free she was getting paid through the government or whatever and so i was like okay well i have to pray about it there have been people offer me to come live with them but i always say i have to pray about it i don't jump on nothing I always say I have to pray about it because I know that it's very important to you just don't go and just move in with somebody you don't know the people um, you don't you know people can appear one way and they can be another way and so I always say I have to pray about it and my Heavenly Father answers me so and sometimes I just see things myself that I know that I cannot live with so you know I, I'd be like I have to pray about it but I'd be thinking I don't think it's gonna work in my head I'd be thinking that so um I told her I pray about it and so I thought about it and everything but I really did not want to live where she was living in the city that she was living in I really did not want to live there she even offered me to come over one day um she was saying how nice it is it's just a bunch of trees it's like the house was by by itself secluded by itself and she was saying it looks very beautiful and stuff and she, i was like yeah one day i'll go in and see you know um spend the day there you know um and I, that's what i told her so i was thinking about it i was i was thinking about it right and so i was thinking i really don't want to move to that city I like the city that I, I'm in right now, and I really don't want to move to that city. And then I got my storage unit, I got my P.O. box, I, you know, I got a lot of things, and I have to move my storage unit and all this stuff. So I was thinking that then if I do Uber, I got to come way here because this is where most of the rides at the next city over, and I got to come here. And, you know, so I was thinking about that. So, um, I'm trying to remember exactly how it went, if I can remember, but um, it came to me one day. Oh, I forgot another. Oh, I forgot another part. I have to say this: while we was at Starbucks, we was talking. I told her about this incident that I saw, cause you know I watch a lot of um, stuff on YouTube, a lot of um, like what you call those shows how when they take women and they do things you know they murder women and and then they show how they investigated it and they they find they find the killer and all that stuff you know I watch a lot of those shows like Dateline and you know a lot of those shows so I was telling her how these men um this 
you know people in cars they will bump a woman like say a woman is driving down the street at night by herself and so uh, there'll be a man in a car behind her and maybe she'll stop at a light or maybe she's driving and he'll bump her right and so she's thinking oh it's just a fender bender so automatically she stops to get out and that's when they kidnap her they kidnapped the woman like that so i was telling her about that i don't know why we got on that subject right i mean i don't know what made me get on that subject but i was telling her this and as i told her i said you know in the man he bumps her and then she then she stopped you know because she's thinking it's a fender bender it's an accident so when she get out they kidnapped the woman so when i said that to her it's like she went in a daze she went like in a trance and i said i, I said you understand what i'm talking about and she like she like looked at me and she this woman was in deep thought after i said that deep thought and i said dude i said do you you know what i'm talking about right like you un you understand and she was like I was like, what the, what? I was like, why, why, I was thinking to my, I was confused, like, why is she acting like this? I'm like, you, you know what I'm talking, talking about, right? Like, she didn't say anything to me, nothing. She was such in deep thought. So, okay, finally she came to, and we started talking. And so this was, she asked me, I could, you know, come and live with her. I don't have to pay no rent, nothing like that. Then she asked me, you know, I could come and visit and everything. I said, okay, I'll think about it. I'll pray about it. I'll let you know. One day I was praying and stuff. And it just came to my, to my mind that this is the woman. Yahweh do not want you to go with this woman. Be still. He has showed me. All these be still all up until that time that woman grabbed that cup out of that cabinet and put it on the counter it said be still that was the last be still I saw I never saw no more be stills for a very long time that was the last one Yahweh was talking about that woman he did not want me to go live with that woman he did not want me to go visit her house and when I brought up, it came back to my memory, my memory, when I brought up about the woman, how the man would hit the woman and the woman thinking it's a fender bender gets out of her car and then they kidnap her. I'm like, oh my God, I hope I didn't get this woman no ideas. I was like, I think I just gave this woman an idea on how to kidnap other women. I really believe that this woman had something that she was doing. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's sex trafficking. I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's um what you call it when you hunt people in the woods, blood sport. This woman, I honestly believe that this woman was doing something like that. Because when I told her about that, she went into a trance like a, such a deep thought that i could not bring her to and so it made me know that this woman is up to something evil and that's why my heavenly father warned me to be still it was for this woman so you know how i told you the heavenly father give you the answer way before you even ask he already gave me the answer long time ago i don't know how long i have been seeing be still a couple a couple of months maybe and then when she brought that cup out that was the last be still i saw in such a long time it was because if he didn't want me to go with that woman nowhere because that woman is dangerous and he knew it and i it was confirmed when i told her about the uh, fender bender and the way she acted it just it just made me know it confirmed to me that this woman is up to no good why would you act like that after I say something like that so 
This is what I'm talking about. You trash talk the Heavenly Father. You talk down to Him. Of course you're going to be scared. He, he's not going to warn you of anything. You're not His friend. You're not a child of His. How can He warn you? You don't draw closer to Him. You draw closer to Satan. If you're fornicating, if you're cussing, if you're doing all these things He tell you not to do, you drawing closer to Satan. And you know Satan is ready to grab your soul at any moment, any chance he gets. He ready to take your soul from you. You don't draw closer to God. So God can warn you when there's danger up ahead. He been warning me about that woman. I feel more safe when I'm doing Uber. But if I was trash talking God. Putting him down and stuff. I wouldn't feel safe about doing Uber. I don't want no man in the car with me by myself. Yeah, yeah. That's how you're going to feel. That's exactly how you're going to feel. Anyway, y'all can tell I, I'm just bothered by some things, by, by the way people act. I'm just bothered by it, by the way people talk about the Heavenly Father. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in another video. Y'all have a good night. Bye.